I went in the army in 1941 and I spent five and a half years in the army and I went all over France, Belgium, Holland as far as Arnhem. I went up the beach at D-Day and the last year I spent in the army I spent in India. That was me. Pete, what was you doing in India? What was I doing in India? India. Nothing. <laughs> out of the way. Was we it? were sent out there, I think, for the last year, just to get us out of the way. How oh, right. What did you do during the Battle of Arnhem? What, what? Where was you, where, where, what was you doing in the Battle of Arnhem? I went up to Arnhem, and that's as far as I got. So I sent the men out there yeah, to protect them. And I was watching them all come in at Arnhem. Yes. And they were coming in on the gliders. That's right. And and they were being shot from from the ground as they came in by the Germans. Yes. yes. Yeah. And that's as far as I got. And then I came home from there. I came back from there. How many people have been killed in the war? Approximately. Now, how did I know that question was going to come up? Came up in the well, Overall, about 50 million. Let us remember that Russia, right down to Japan, China. Overall, nearly 50 million people. And sad to say, there were four people in my class in Jamaica. One, four of us volunteered, one did not return. But in addition to that, there were other people who were in the Air, in the, in the air Force, the pilots and engineers and gunners, they also died, and they came from the West Indies too, in addition to the many British people who died, and Australians and Canadians who, and people from the Commonwealth who died for the greater good of Britain. Do you think the time that you gave to the services was worth it? If you recall that during those days, Britain was a colony, and the, the liberation that we have today have no significance of what happened in that time. We are loyal citizens, citizens of Jamaica, and as being British, the philosophy in Jamaica, I'm using high quality language today, um, did not exist. We were recruited, we asked, we were asked to come and help in the war, because at that time, Britain actually was running short of men. They were short of both men of in the army and the air force and the navy, because they are all overseas, all over the theater of operations, fighting the war against Italy, Hitler, and Mussolini. So we volunteered. We filled the gap that was needed to be filled at that time. Unknown to a lot of people who live in this country, they did not realize why we came here. And I would say openly, clearly, in those days. Except for the Americans, there was no great color discrimination. However, we had poor English people, unfortunately English people. We had people who did not want to fight. We had what was called conscientious objectors. And they did not volunteer to fight in the last war. And they were given special jobs. They weren't treated, treated politely, I can say that. But they're around us. We know them. I met them. I had my views about them. It wasn't so strong a view because I did not really recognize what a conscientious objector was. Mm -hmm. But there were English people in this country who did not join the forces. Many West Indians were air crews and all that, and many died, and as well as in the armed forces. And especially in India, hundreds, thousands of people died to give us freedom today. Yeah. I'll even say further to that. When you are in the forces, you do not have fear. There's nothing, you, nothing scared me. You got a job to do, you did the job, you obey orders, and you get on with the job. God is wonderful. We all, even the Germans were Christians themselves, and although they were kidding us. They had a faith too, but we also had a faith. But when you are getting orders and you're supposed to win the battle and do a job, there's no turning back. You have to go ahead. In today's society, you hear and you disobey. In that, in that society, during the war, you do not disobey. You do as you are told. I traveled from Waterloo to Brixton in 1948, and I didn't see one minority or black person. 
with Claudia Jones, we set up the West Indian Carnival in 1959. Today, a million of you youngsters go and jump up and down. That's but right. it was Claudia's idea. Overall, we were proud to be British. And the Germans were very wrong in saying that they were superior. God made everybody. No one is superior. No. And you. overall, we survived. And we must give God thanks. Memories you um, would like to forget. Mr. Yes. When it's concerned, I can <clears throat> go back in my memory to when I first came in this country. Apparently, the people of this country, they weren't told anything of the West Indies. And when we came here, they all thought that we were from the jungle. Because the, the general consensus was, once you are black, you are from Africa. And you live in trees. You live in, you, you, um, you can't speak English. And when we came here, the first reaction was, what's happening here? All these, all these guys in RF uniform. And at the time, to be in the RF was a big deal to be in the RF. And these black fellows come along in RF uniforms. So the, the, the rumor went around that, oh, they have tails. And when coming to England, they cut off their tails. So if you go to a dance hall and you have to get a dance, you could feel the girl's hand going down, try to feel for your for your stump. That isn't a joke. That actually actually happened. Because the people of this country, they weren't told or they weren't informed of, of the, the, the they knew that there was a British Empire. But they didn't know the, the, the ins and outs of it. We knew in Jamaica because we had the, the, the English curriculum. But over here they didn't know anything. At first I was annoyed because we all were taught that it's a border country and we more or less said, oh yes, we are coming along white relations. But the people here didn't know anything about us. Afterwards, getting, getting to um, the talk to us and all that, they realized. I can remember here Vice Marshal Taylor when we landed at, at um, in, in um, Liverpool, the docks. And he was addressing us. He says, well, chaps, I thank you very much for coming to help us in our, our, our distress. I wish I was going back to your country. Mm. And then I realized what it was all about because he said, well, you West Indians in your warm country and you come here in a cold country, mm -hmm. you know, to come and help us. Yeah. And that was the reaction of the, the population by the time they, they gradually got to know about about us mm -hmm. and our, our existence, mm -hmm. anyhow. Did any of you fight on the front line? Any front line fighters? <coughs> well, once you're in uniform, you're on the front line. Once you're mm -hmm. in yes. uniform, it all depends on your luck, where you are posted, what you have been doing. For instance, in, in the war now, I was very fortunate, and this was always warning me because the service that I was doing was saving lives. I was in the Royal Navy, I was serving on minesweepers, patrol, um, convoy patrol, picking up survivors because the submarines were sinking the ships right left and center. And we were there. So we were actually in the middle of it. So it all depends on your luck, wherever you are, what, what you're doing, what you're asked to do. I saw, I saw so many things on the way, right through France and Belgium, whatever. But I wouldn't care to say in front of these people here what it was like. It was, it was something you, you just, just didn't want anybody to know. I never told them at home or, or whatever. Never told my wife, never told my daughter, whatever. You're talking it, about it, the it bodies, was, you're talking it, about the mutilation. Yeah, the wounds. That's a serious part, which is a hidden factor when people talk about the greatness of Britain and the greatness of each country. Because war is not a picnic. It's not something one would want to strive to, to have again in, this, in our lifetime. And things got to change, for the better or the worse. And luckily, people have get to realize that 
try and, 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 and live together. It's progressive. Which is it's progressive. Thank you. Can I just add to that too? One of the mission, mission points is that if you're, whatever, whatever skills you have, whatever part of society you, you have, once you join the British forces, whether the Army, Navy, uh -huh. or the Air Force, you become comrades. You, you back up each brother, each sister behind you. You are part of all good things. And you never, I would never let this lady down or that gentleman down if he is in need. And it's, it's a brotherhood. And it's a society on its own. Would you join up? If there was a war, if this country was at war, yeah. 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 yes, I would. Yeah. Who would? Who would? Right. Yeah. Hands up. Okay. Who, who, who definitely wouldn't? Okay. okay. I'm going to speak to those who wouldn't. Where? I've had this question for because I've been on a television show. Where would you go? You would prefer to go to prison and be locked away? Yeah. Or, is, or you? So you you'd get covered. And would you be a man or a coward? Coward. Coward. And you prefer to be a coward and say you're a leader in the country? Yeah. You'd starve you. Yeah. I, I, I think the more interesting question is, why would you not? What were your reasons for not? Similarly, the people, the young people who said they would do it, what, what would be your motivation for doing it? If you wouldn't, why would you not? Because you could die. Because you could die. So it would be fair that would prevent you from... Would what other reasons would you... Why would you why would you not join up? Well this is a serious problem in my way of thinking. There must be a reason why you entertain the, 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 the feeling that you wouldn't be willing to, to pump participate in anything happening. Well, I'm a strong religious person. Eh? I'm a religious person. Yes, you're, you're a religious person. But at the same time, yeah. although you're a religious person, you can still be active. You, you, can, you, can be, um, you can be an ambulance man or, or something in, in that capacity. So Have you read it, the history of the Jewish people? Well, try and read it. Their survival is fighting all the time, and God directed them to fight to survive, even until today. In your Bible. Yeah. Well, they said that the man who fled the battle lived to see another day. Sorry? They say that the man who fled the battle lived to see another day. Mm. Can, I, can I ask you guys, <laughs> do you think that these people here who served in the war, who fought in the war, do you think that you now have a choice whether to be in a war or not because of them? No. Yes. 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 How many of these would join the army now? Would you? I've seen a rat and all of that. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> 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 you just been convinced that they should. You do a little bit of training. And then you'll be sent to Afghanistan. In yes. about six weeks, you're dead. That's no, no, no good. No, 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 no. I no. don't mind just doing something. I mean, don't volunteer for nothing. Oh, nothing no, at no, all. It's not the attitude all the time. Believe me. No. <laughs> we, if that had happened to you in the war, we wouldn't be here now. We would not be here. If we weren't here... Hey, he's talking to you. I'm oh, sorry. No, I'm talking to you. I like it. That's a silly <laughs> statement you just made. I don't volunteer for anything. If you didn't volunteer, I do. I volunteered, you volunteered. What would happen then? Nobody would be here now. Yeah, but I... You'd be overrun. I didn't volunteer for nothing. Oh, you didn't? Oh, you was called up, were you? I got, I got called up. Oh, I, didn't, oh, I wasn't you're a conscripted. You did not I say wasn't that conscripted. Mm. I got called up. Well, and all thing. you did was get a letter through the door with, a, with a, a train ticket on it saying, you've got to go to so and so and so and so. And I ended up in Dorchester. In the barracks at Dorchester, and I was then in the army for five and a half years. So, you, if, if you hadn't got that letter, you, you wouldn't have gone. I, I don't, either was I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have volunteered for anything. Right, okay. Okay. Well, so you had no and then after that, after that, there were people who were conscripted for three years, oh, I know that, yeah. and they knew how long they were going to be in. Yeah. But we never knew how long. No, I don't have volunteered. I was yeah. seventeen. I didn't yeah. know I was going to be. That's right. Okay. Well, Nigerian. But where were you born? Nigerian. 
You were born in Nigeria. Do you feel British? Pardon? Speak out, speak out. Ngola? Young man? You were born in Jamaica? You were born here. You British? Yes. You British? Portugal. What about you, sir? Are you British? You're English? Yeah. What about yourself? You're English, British. We have passports, so we're the same as them. They You're going to be a politician, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> He's doing a lot of talking. He's a good boy.